I'm Jim White. Uh, recently, Veritasium put out a video uh, with a question. And uh, the video is linked below in the description, as well as some of the uh, some replies to the video uh, with answers to the question. And uh, I suggest you look at the original video so you understand what I'm talking about in this video. So basically, uh, Derek had a, a lamp and a battery and a switch, and the thought experiment was if these wires go out for huge distances, in fact, 300 million meters, what's the time for the lamp to light after the switch is thrown? And uh, there's some caveats such as the wires have zero resistance and the light bulb lights as soon as any current reaches it. So, the, uh, what I think are the best explanations uh, in the videos linked below is to treat each of these long lines as a transmission line. So at this point and this point from here on, they're basically transmission lines. And transmission lines have a characteristic impedance which is basically calculated from the inductance per unit length divided by the capacitance per unit length. Now, I like to work with real numbers. It helps me conceptualize a little better. So, uh, Derek says these wires are one meter apart. So, to calculate this, we need to know the diameter. Since they have zero resistance, I picked a very small wire of one millimeter in diameter. So that's a radius of a half a millimeter. So if we drop the numbers into that equation, we come up with 911 ohms. Now just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to pick an automotive light bulb uh, the smallest ones are around 6 watts. There's other ones up to 30 watts. And I'm going to pick a 12-volt battery. So, if the characteristic impedance is 911 ohms, that's from here to here and here to here. We have a, a loop resistance of 1822 ohms plus the bulb resistance, which is very small. So initially, now all circuits have a, an initial transient response and then a final steady state response. So the initial transient current would be the 12 volts divided by the impedance, which is two Z naughts, and we end up with 6.6 .6 milliamps. Now that current can't appear instantly uh, because no current or voltage can change instantly due to the propagation time of space, but that will be the value in the short transient response. So, now the steady state response will be, it's after current is established around the whole loop. For a six watt lamp, the rated current would be 500 milliamps at 12 volts. So eventually, the current will reach 500 milliamps to the lamp. So the initial transient response only produces 6.6 uh, .6 milliamps. And so the, the real question 
and we, we just said that can occur instantly. So the real question is if this is the time when the switch is closed and we're going to reach our 6.6 .6 milliamps, but it can't be instantly. So I think uh, the original question has to be when does the current start? And Derek's answer it was a multiple question or multiple answer question. And he states the time will be one meter divided by the speed of light, since the lamp is one meter from the battery. And uh, using the transmission line uh, type solution, uh, I agree with that. However, there's a little thing here that's cringeworthy, I know. But, this knife switch uh, is a capacitor at this point, and it has charge on it. And as soon as Derek starts to move that switch, some current will start to flow in the circuit. So I maintain there, there's current even before the switch is closed, and it'll be some value at the instant the switch makes contact. So my answer would be the time is zero. It's even less than this. Now I know this is a kind of a weasel point, but it is a fact. So uh, my selection from his list of answers would be none of the above because there's current there at the instant the switch makes contact. So the first point here was a question and the second point in the video is an assumption. So next I'd like to uh, address that assumption and uh, see if we can prove it or disprove it. Okay, next let's uh, talk about this. Uh, in uh, the Veritasium video, this was an assumption and uh, the basis for Derek's answer on the time delay. So, uh, maybe this is true. Uh, especially uh, if you look at light and lasers and that kind of thing. But is it true in an electrical circuit? So let's look at some things here quickly. We have a battery with two wires out here and then another battery with wires out here. We have charges on these wires and charges on these wires. So there's an electric field between these wires and an electric field between these wires. The question is, is there an electric field between those wires? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, I, I know if I measure a voltage from here to here, I can measure the voltage, and from here to here, I can measure a voltage. But between these points, I won't measure a voltage. So, uh, does a field exist between two wires in that particular condition? Let's do this. Let's 
complete the circuit. I guess we can put something out here to limit the current. And let's have a another battery here and another load. So we have electron flow this way and here we have electron flow this way. So first of all is there any current flowing in that wire? If the voltages are exactly equal and the loads are exactly equal the electron flow will be around the outer loop. So let's use two different wires once. Well, if there was no current flowing in that wire, it doesn't create a magnetic field. So let's do it again. Okay, we got electrons flowing around here, and we got electrons flowing around that loop. So, in close proximity to those two wires, there would be magnetic fields. But at a distance from them, the currents would be in opposite directions, so the fields would cancel. Uh, in our original problem, we said the, the wires can be very small because there's zero resistance. So if we have two very close wires, one conducting current into the board and one conducting current out of the board, the fields will be in opposite directions. So in between the wires uh, there is a field but as we get out further and further the fields cancel each other. So there wouldn't be a far field and in the, the world of uh, electricity and electronics uh, that is often used. We have parallel conductors, uh, even your lamp cord is close together, parallel conductors. Uh, if they were far apart, you'd have big magnetic fields all over the place. But the closer they can get together, the smaller the far field. Also, twisted pair is used a lot, uh, not only to prevent a net pickup of changing magnetic fields from other sources, but also to prevent radiation of a magnetic field. Now when twisted pair is used, there's usually a source and a load at each end. But these two wires could be a twisted pair where the signal is not related one would be carrying this current and one would be carrying that current. So again there would be no net far field. Uh, we also sometimes use coaxial cable for this advantage. Here's an oscilloscope probe with a coaxial cable so that we can't pick up stray radiation from other sources. So this is a common thing. So ponder these two things for a while and then let's go back to our original circuit. Well, actually not our original circuit. I want to show you a, a new circuit what if we had two batteries very close together? 
and let's let's have two switches very close together that operate instantaneously together and over here we have two light bulbs and one light bulb is in that circuit and one light bulb is in the other circuit now let's assume these are extremely close together as close as possible or even twisted pairs it would appear to me since the electron flow is opposite in these circuits that we're not going to have a far field magnetic field around any of these wires and since these are different energy sources see this uh, this one here is negative and this one here is positive do those charges mean anything to each other so I don't see where there's a magnetic field or an electric field making a pointing vector in this case and possibly even if there is they're in opposite directions and cancel so perhaps uh, Derek uh, and the other physicists there could ponder this for a while and uh, let us know do they truly believe there's a pointing vector in this situation and if so with their uh, fancy 3D software, can they show it to us? I, I'd like to see where it is because I don't understand it at this point. So that's the uh, conclusion of uh, my video. I'm a big fan of Veritasium and Derek. Watch them all the time. But I just couldn't resist uh, a response to that video. So thanks for watching.